Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, virtual session here at the uh, Embedded Linux Conference in North America. And today uh, I'm here to talk about Piper, which is uh, this new multimedia services for Linux that is emerging and is gaining more popularity nowadays, uh, and how it's ready uh, for the automotive world. Um, so yeah, I'm going to split this conference into two parts. On the first one, I'm going to um, talk about how uh, Piper works, what is it, what advantages does it have compared to other multimedia services. And then on the second part, I'm going to focus more on embedded and automotive and how Piper was uh, adopted by one of our clients uh, last year. Uh, client is uh, automotive grid links, so how it was adopted as their main core uh, multimedia uh, service. But before moving on, I'm just going to do a quick introduction to myself. So hi there, I'm Julian, uh, and I am a Spanish multimedia software developer. Uh, I'm uh, part of the multimedia team at Collabra. Uh, I've been working, I, I joined the company quite recently. Uh, I joined uh, uh, almost a year and a half ago, uh, and since I joined the company, I basically worked full time uh, on Piper and therefore uh, White Piper the session manager. So that being said, let's start. So, what is Piper? What is is uh, technology that everybody's talking about nowadays? Um, so, yeah, Piper, as I said before, is essentially a fresh multimedia service for Linux that was originally meant uh, to handle only video devices. Uh, in fact, uh, the original name of the project was uh, Pulse Video, but, but then it evolved and it became more a generic multimedia services that can handle both video and audio devices. So with Piper, you can basically capture um, video buffers from cameras or graphic sources, such as Wayland, for example, if you are recording your desktop or or OpenGL or Vulkan if you're running uh, you know, a graphics application on your desktop. But you can also do audio and capture uh, playback. Um, so you can basically capture uh, buffers from the uh, microphone of your computer and you can basically uh, play music also or play all, any kind of audio uh, in the speakers of your laptop. So this is like basically the whole you know, generic concept of Piper. Uh, and uh, the idea is for applications to connect to this uh, service, which is basically a server or a demo. And basically that service handles these devices automatically for you and applications, they just need to worry about, you know, sending or receiving buffers in a specific format and that's it. So they don't need to worry about configuring devices or anything like that. So, so why do we need Piper uh, nowadays? Why? I mean, we have, uh, you know, we have Pulse Audio and we have Jack. So Pulse Audio nowadays is more like a generic audio services that handles all the devices on your desktop. You know, something you plug uh, a headphone, so it's gonna stop using the speakers of the laptop. It's gonna use uh, basically the, your headphones. Uh, but and then we have like. Jack audio server, which is uh, more focused on professional and low latency audio playback. So um, why do we need an extra one, right? Well, uh, one of the main problems that Piper wants to solve is to unify uh, basically pools audio and Jack servers. You know, it wants to basically replace them and, you know, basically your computer will just run one audio server that handles all of that, simplifying uh, a lot the Linux multimedia stack. Because at the moment it's quite... Uh, complex. So if you want to do both things, you have to run Pulse Audio and you have to run also Jack. And, uh, you know, these two servers, they, they have to basically send debuff messages, for example, to reserve a device because a device can only be used by one of the servers. So, so there's basically debuff messages going around. There's, um, there's more complexity. It's slower. It's hard to maintain. It's hard to understand. And it's also hard for the applications to know which one they should use. Um, so all of that is hard to maintain and, um, it's, it's, it's way, way much, much better and simple to have just one audio server that handles all of that. 
Now, another thing that Piper solves is the permissions because it supports uh, containers like Flatpak, uh, and it doesn't rely on group permissions such as the, you know the uh, famous Odeon video Linux groups uh, to basically know if it can uh, access the video devices or the audio devices. No, uh, Piper basically asks the container Flatpak or Wayland if uh, he can uh, have access to the video or audio devices, and based on that, it's basically can give you permissions or not. Uh, so this is very important nowadays, and um, both audio and Jack Auto Server don't do that. Uh, so in terms of security, Piper is way, way much better. Uh, now, Piper is also very, very low latency, so it can handle very small buffer sizes of up to 32 samples, which is about 1-2 milliseconds of latency. And uh, it's also very, very flexible because it provides an API for users to write their own external session manager uh, and you can adapt basically Piper to any use cases because the session manager tells Piper how to behave you know, when uh, a multimedia application connects to the daemon. We're going to talk about the session manager more like later in the session. Uh, but for now, let's just have a look at the Linux multimeter stack if we run, you know, the Piper server on our computer. So the Piper service can be seen like as a middle layer between the kernel and the applications. And as you can see here, there's plenty of example applications. These applications, they basically connect to the Piper nodes, which are like processing elements. And these nodes, they basically do all the format conversion, the mixing, and all of that. Uh, and then send or receive buffers to the, uh, to the multimedia device. So for example, if you want to screen capture our desktop, basically the application would connect to the, uh, uh, to the Wayland source to basically receive buffers. Um, uh, and then basically record them. Or, for example, if you want to play multimedia, like for example, you want to play music with a like a, a music player, that music player would connect to the um, uh, the audio sync processing element of Piper, and they would play. And for example, if many applications want to use a specific device, but Piper handles all of that. So, for example, two applications could connect to the same uh, processing element, and again, all the format and uh, device setting up and checking their busy or not. This is also this is all done automatically by Piper and applications. They don't need to worry about that, which makes uh, all the setup much 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 easier. Uh, oh, another thing is uh, you can as you can see on the top right corner, uh, the Piper session manager is also an application that is connected to Piper and basically it controls Piper. It tells them. What uh, what uh, device to use in case there's multiple, you know, cameras or multiple speakers. So basically, the session manager specifies a policy logic to handle and create all the links based on that logic, uh, which makes Piper very flexible, and uh, you can it makes Piper to be adaptable to any use cases. So uh, if I want to use Piper on my uh, computer, do I need to change all my uh, multimedia applications? Uh, well, no, because there's uh, some compatibility, there's compatibility APIs built on top of Piper. So for example, also application, they would, they can use the Piper PCM plugin, which internally creates those uh, Piper nodes and connects to Piper and sends the buffers to Piper instead of uh, also. And the same for Pulse Audio and Jack because there's replacement replacement for Lip Pulse and uh, Lip Jack. So uh, applications they don't need to change. Um, I mean, eventually you want them to change and use the Piper API, but it's something that doesn't need to to do quickly. You can use these compatibility APIs and everything uh, will work fine. We're gonna see uh, an example of this, for example, in the demonstration video that I'm gonna do at the end of this conference. Now, the architecture and design of Piper uh, is very similar to most of the open source projects. So it has uh, modules, and each module implements uh, a different driver. For example, we have a module for, um, for the beautiful Linux uh, drivers, then we have a module for the ALSA drivers, and we have a module for um, 
Bluetooth, for example, and then we have each module has like plugins, and these plugins implement different functionality on these uh, modules. So, for example, for also we have for audio we have plugins to do audio conversion or audio mixing, and for video we have also video conversion. So, it's, as you can see, it's very similar to GStreamer. Uh, so, because it's graph based, so we have notes instead of elements. Uh, which are basically the ones charged to process data, data. Then we have ports, which are like pads and basically ports are the connections between the nodes and they have a specific capability. They have the, the buffers, they have a specific data. And then they have, there's also links, which in Piper are objects. Now, another important thing is like, uh, Pulse Audio Piper is multi-processed, so it's basically a daemon that runs on the background and then clients connect to it. Um, and the daemon basically starts to process most of the data. Even though no nodes can, even though nodes can also run in the clients, uh, which can be very useful. For example, we have slow nodes that we don't want to stall the Piper daemon and we want to run them on the clients. This is very useful, for example, for Bluetooth. Uh, and again, another example of uh, another process, process is the external session manager, which is a different process that is connected to Piper and tells him how to behave. So yeah, it's multi-process and this, uh, the communication between the processes is with our, by our protocol and with sockets. Uh, it's also another very, very interesting feature about Piper is that it's also fully based on its internal and simple plugin API library. So it doesn't, Depend, it does have any dependencies, so uh, it only depends on that uh, SPA library, which is already included inside the project. And it's an extremely simple and lightweight generic uh, purpose multimedia library. So with that library, you can basically do audio mixing, you can do uh, audio conversion or video conversion, but very, very simple. Um, and it also has like some generic uh, data structures like arrays or like lists or uh, hash tables, but very, very simple because most of the library is uh, a he header only C library. And again, it's uh, that, that, that doesn't depend on any dependencies. Uh, so it's very, very different if you are familiar to GLib and GStream libraries. Now, thanks to that library uh, and its static code design approach, uh, uh, because there's almost no mallocs, so you grab for the Piper project, you will hardly see any malloc. Um, thanks to all of that, the performance is very, very impressive. Um, it also uses modern Linux uh, APIs such as MMFD and uh, DMA buff to zero copy buffers to. Um, uh, from the devices, uh, and it then it also um, uses event of the and timer of the for waking up processes and for scheduling. Uh, so thanks to that, Piper it's considered low CPU usage and low latency real time capable. In fact, if we have a look at the performance, we can see here uh, some graphs uh, comparing it against Pulse Audio. Uh, each graph will basically uh, show you uh, the performance, the CPU usage with different uh, buffer sizes. So, for example, we have big buffer sizes of 8,192 samples, which the performance is mostly similar to, uh, to Pulse Audio when running, um, when trying to do a playback of a file. But then, as the buffer size reduces, the performance of Piper doesn't change too much, whereas in Pulse Audio increases completely. So, for example, for small buffers of 62 samples, the CPU usage on Piper is only 0.03%, which is very impressive. And, uh, for example, if you do a mixing of two channels of buffers uh, of 512 uh, samples, the performance is just... 0.007% compared to Pulse Audio, which is only 0.2% of CPU users. Now, also another thing to note is that uh, Piper handles buffer sizes of even smaller uh, than 62 samples, so it can handle 32 sample buffers, 
uh, and proof all you cannot handle that. Uh, this this arrows, this underrun arrows when you try to to use small buffs like that. All these uh, performance is um, published on the wiki of the Piper project. You can see it in there. And you know the hardware where this has been tested is basically an Intel Core i7, uh, 3.4 uh, gigahertz. Now, if you compare the uh, the CPU usage against Jack, we can see that it's mostly similar, but it's better as you know you um, you use smaller buffers. So, for example, for Jack. The performance uh, of 128 buffer samples, it's a uh, 0.017%, whereas, sorry, in Piper is 0.017%, whereas in Jack is 0.026% uh, when running one client. Uh, and when we run eight Jack clients, uh, the performance is even, uh, the performance difference is actually even bigger. Again, this was testing the same hardware. Uh, and uh, you can see more uh, results if you're interested in performance in the uh, performance wiki page of uh, the Python project. Uh, and again, if you use a uh, buffer size of 32 samples, Jack underruns and fails, whereas Python works. Um, if you really want to achieve extremely low latency of one or two milliseconds. Uh, now, security uh, in Python is also... Um, done uh, like correctly now like, as I say it uses containers instead of relying on user groups and basically the session manager grants permissions to applications so um, and every part of the graph every node on Piper can be made visible to some applications or can be hidden to some other applications so the applications can see an entire different graph when they connect to Piper. And uh, there's three kinds of permissions. So there's read, write, and execute. Uh, read means that you can see the node and you can capture buffers from it. Write means that you can uh, write buffers from the node and you can do playback. And execute allows uh, applications to basically uh, um, execute methods on the, these objects. So for example, they can uh, set, configure the node to basically use a specific format uh, and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so now if uh, let's move on the uh, external session manager. So a very interesting thing is that the external session manager uh, it's not included in the Piper project. There's only one example of it, uh, which is mostly used for testing, but there's no uh, reference implementation of a proper session manager. Um, so the session manager is it's, uh, it basically creates and configures devices to emit new nodes. Uh, it set up nodes, it set up the number of ports, the number of formats. Uh, it creates links based on its policy logic when a, a client connects. Uh, it grants security and access control to clients. And it's also launched by the Piper demo at startup. Um, if you run Piper without a session manager, it doesn't do anything. It's just going to be there waiting for you to tell him what to do. So the, the application that has full control of Piper is actually a session manager. Uh, so the current status of Piper is uh, so 0.3.5 uh, version was released uh, last month in May 2020, and it was uh, shipped and distributed in Fedora 32. Uh, that release improved a lot of uh, issues. So plenty of Jack applications now uh, they are already working with Piper. Uh, the same for Pulse Audio. Uh, Bluetooth is starting to be fully supported, even though it needs more testing. Uh, the mid interface works. Uh, it's planning to replace Pulse Audio soon. Uh, Jack is going to wait a little bit more. Uh, uh, video capture works uh, fine from uh, video for Linux devices. And you can even do a screencasting with Western, Gnome Shell, and Wayland Roots. All of that is supported. Uh, and it was adopted by AGL, as I said, uh, Automotive Grade Linux, as the core audio framework last year. So who started this project? Uh, so the author is Wim Timens. Uh, he's a well-known audio streamer developer and ex-maintainer. Uh, the project is sponsored by Red Hat. 
uh, it's embraced by Pulse Audio developers because it's seen as the next generation of Pulse Audio. And it's also welcomed by us and Jack developers. Uh, the license of the project is MIT. Uh, oh, before moving on to the second part, now I'm going to just, this is a small example of a small contribution I have made in Piper. Uh, it is possible now to generate a graph with all the nodes, links, and ports that the daemon has uh, by just running the piper.tool, uh, the several options. You can show basically all the objects, you can only show the linked object, and you can show all the properties of the objects, uh, which is very, very easy to debug. So with that, it's it's uh, much better now. If you want to become a Piper developer, it's actually much easier to, to contribute. Again, this tool, uh, I'm going to show you an example of this tool in the video demonstration at the end of this session. Okay, and now let's move on to the second part. So, Piper in the automotive in industry. Um, so, yeah, why Piper suits perfectly the automotive industry and not other audio servers? Well, the problem is that device handling in connected cars is very complex. So, you know, in a speaker, you have basically one microphone, uh, two speakers, you know, the left and right speakers, um, and a camera. And that's it. You always have one camera, one microphone, or two speakers. The most complex logic you can achieve on a laptop, for example, is what if you connect, you know, a headset. You basically have to stop playing audio on the speakers and you have to use a headset. That's mostly the, the only light you have to do. But in a car, it's way, way much more complex because there's plenty of speakers and cameras. So for example, uh, there's speakers on the front, the speakers on the back. Uh, like for example, the GPS and all of that probably want to just use the front speakers while the uh, you know, music, when you're playing the radio and all of that, you want to use all of the speakers and emergency, you want to use all the speakers. There's also, uh, you can also connect a Bluetooth and you can speak on the phone while doing, while doing all of that. Uh, and then there's multiple radio, sorry, multiple audio stream, radio emergency navigation communication that can happen all at the same time. And on top of that, there's also different cameras. So for example, if you are, you know, uh, parking, you, you, and you are doing back, you are going backwards, you have to use the back camera, but if the car moves forward, you want to use the front camera and, and this also all these, handling it's very complex so how do we handle all of that the solution is a, a piper with a custom and flexible external session manager that allows uh, basically the users to find their own policy logic to know what device gonna use based on what you know the connected car or the system is doing um, and with Piper that's possible because uh, with Piper you can do custom policy logic, you can do custom hardware pipelines, hardware control abstraction, and on top of that, uh, it tries security. Uh, so as I said before, there's no uh, default reference implementation of a session manager for Piper at the moment. Uh, and this is why here at Collabora we had the motivation to write the first external session manager for Piper. Which is called a white plumber. Uh, white plumber was originally planned for embedded only, uh, to solve, uh, the automatic case we had last year, but it evolved and now it's a generic and fully featured session manager for both embedded and desktop. Uh, now, uh, against Piper, so, uh, white plumber is based on the object to support bindings, uh, in other languages such as Rust, Python, or Lua. Uh, and this is because we want the users to, to be able to define, you know, uh, the policy logic very quickly without needing to write complex low level C code. Um, so, Wiplumber introduces new objects to make that much easier. So, it introduces the concept of an endpoint, which, uh, which is basically an object that handles pipe or node. Think of it like the end part of a graph, more like, you know, a bin with a lot of nodes and that they have a specific logic. So for example, there is the audio software DSP endpoint who, um, that, uh, basically handles all the mixing and, uh, of different audio streams. And then for example, the simple node endpoint that basically wraps, you know, a node into an endpoint. Now we have streams, which are basically connection point of our endpoints. Streams can be seen more like, uh, like 
a port of an endpoint because they are used to link endpoints. And then there is the session, which is basically a set of endpoints. So we have, for example, the video session that only has video endpoints and the audio session that has uh, audio endpoints. And session is also much easier to, to handle permissions. And users obviously can create new sessions. So uh, to have a better idea of this, so you can see here an example of a software DSP endpoint. Uh, so on the right, we have obviously the software DSP endpoint, and on the left, we have the client endpoint. And the client is basically a music application that just wants to play music on the speakers of your laptop. Uh, so it's going to basically connect to the music uh, stream of the laptop speakers endpoint. But for example, if another application, for example, your desktop manager wants to notify, send a notification that for example, you have received a new email, it would connect to the notification endpoint. And again, all the mixing is done internally in the endpoint um, so that defining the policy logic is much easier. Uh, but again, and let's say, for example, in, in embedded and, uh, and let's say you're running Piper in a car. So for example, you have the the media player and you want to play music from you want to play radio and you want to use the uh, the car speakers so you can basically do the um, you can basically connect the uh, uh, sort of the speakers of the car to the uh, also stream and then the notification would be connected to uh, a different speaker, so for example, the front speaker for uh, emergency. And uh, you can wrap all of this logic into an endpoint and basically defining the uh, logic for desktop and for embedded, it would be the same because uh, the, the implementation of the endpoint is not exposed to, it's not important for um, when, when linking uh, endpoints. So yeah. Um, and yeah, in terms of uh, the design of Wireplumber, uh, Wireplumber is essentially a library, a libwireplumber.so, that provides an API that makes easy writing Wireplumber modules and even other session managers. So Wireplumber is essentially an executable that loads the modules written using uh, that library uh, that provides, you know, functionality. Uh, and that's it. But you can, if you want to use your own executable, you just can uh, use the Wireplumber library and uh, do all your log logic as you want. So it's modular. Um, so some example of Wireplumber modules are the monitor module, which uh, basically monitor device and creates nodes when enabled. Then we have the client permissions that base module that grants permissions to clients when connected. Uh, it has a config endpoint, which basically creates different endpoints per node based on configuration files. Uh, and we have also the uh, config policy module, which basically links endpoints based on configuration files. And uh, finally, we have, um, we plan to, right now it's not included, but we plan to uh, add bindings uh, support. Mm -hmm. So one example would be uh, writing uh, a module in WordPress that interprets Lua files uh, for quick and easy custom policies. So this this is very this can be very useful for uh, automotive uh, and embedded cases because Lua is very it's very nice for writing configuration files. But for example, if you wanna do, uh, if you wanna use Wi-Fi, sorry, uh, Piper in a desktop, we can write um, basically Python scripts or Rust uh, scripts uh, that base in a much higher level uh, to do basically any kind of policy logic. And uh, with that, you basically can integrate against Piper. You basically have uh, all the different uh, levels of integration against Piper. So if you just wanna don't wanna use Wi-Fi, you just use the Piper API to to basically do custom policy logic. But if you want more high level, you can use Wi-Plumber because it has a GLib integration. And if you want even more high level, you can use uh, the bindings and basically do uh, Piper policy logic using other languages such as Python. Uh, so we made several releases of Wi-Plumber. So we have the 0.1 release, the first one, which was released in July last year <clears throat> and it was used, it was included in the uh, AGL Happy Hollywood um, 
branch, or it's included in that release. Uh, then we had uh, the version 2, the 0 0.2, which was released in December last year, and it was included in uh, the AGL Happy Hollywood 8.0.5 release, and also the AGL Itchy Hitfish, which is a 9.0 release of the system. And uh, this month, in June, <coughs> we, we released the 0 0.3 version, which is the first version with desk support. Now, future, we plan to support, uh, again, the bindings, because at the moment they are not uh, included. So for the next release, we probably will support uh, bindings in other languages. We have to clean the API and make it more stable. We are almost there. Uh, we have to improve the documentation. Uh, we have to, and obviously we have to do more unit tests and examples so that people can start contributing to it. <clears throat> so who started by Plumber? Uh, the author is George. Uh, it's sponsored by Collabora. Uh, it's welcomed by Piper developers. Uh, the Git repository is there. It's a uh, free desktop. Uh, it's got documentation, finally. And its license is the same as Piper. It's an uh, MIT license. Okay, and now we reached the end of the conference. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, <clears throat> a quick demonstration of how to use uh, Piper uh, on your desktop. Okay, so welcome back. And... Uh, so yeah, in this demonstration, what I want to show you is how to use uh, Piper and uh, White Plumber on your desktop, uh, which can be quite interesting for some of you if you want to uh, play a little bit with this technology and also have you know, a better feeling of how an audio server works. Um, so as you can see here, I have on my left terminal uh, the Piper project already configured and built. And uh, the same on the right terminal with right plumber. So I'm gonna basically run first Piper here on the left and then right plumber. But before doing that, I wanna open a couple more terminals because I'm gonna use these uh, terminals uh, to, to run the clients. Uh, now by default, if I just run an audio client here such as mplayer, it's gonna connect to the default audio server of my uh, distro, which is... Um, Pulse Audio, and uh, we don't want to do that. We want them to connect to Piper. Um, so we are gonna run make shell that basically sends sets uh, a bunch of environment variables, such as you know the path, which allows you to use the Piper tools you just already built, or um, the LD library path, which points to the build directory of uh, the Piper we just built and we are gonna run. So make shell allows us to run clients within this shell uh, and they will automatically connect to Piper, which makes very easy to, to test Piper. So I'm going to open a bunch more tabs because we're going to use several um, clients and we're going to run make shell on all of them. Uh, I think five should be enough. So yeah, now once everything is ready, we are gonna run Piper with make run, and we are gonna run um, Pipe Plumber with the log enable. So you can see that it's basically doing some stuff. Now uh, we are, you're gonna also see some warning messages such as device being busy, uh, and this is because I'm recording um, using my microphone. So that device is used by the uh, screen recorder. Um, but it should be fine for what we are going to do, so don't worry too much about that. So everything is running. Um, this is the log of Piper. And now we're going to try to play some audio with mplayer. For example, this one. Now, uh, mplayer by default uh, uses the um, Pulse Audio API. So uh, what when I run this, what it's going to do is uh, going to use the... Um, Lib Pulse compatibility API of Piper and that library internally it's gonna tell Piper that a new client comes in and it's gonna notify the session manager and the session manager is gonna basically create the nodes and link the nodes based on you know uh, the custom policy poli uh, policy. So I run it and uh, you can hear that music is playing. Uh, we can also see some warnings uh, of 
uh, the Pulse Audio compatibility uh, API library. Uh, not all features are implemented yet, but uh, yeah, we, we can hear music. Uh, now I'm gonna use the uh, pipeware dot tool to generate a dot graph similar to GStreamer, and we can see that you know the nodes are uh, basically connected. Uh, it's very easy to use. You just do pipeware dot and then the name of the file where you want the graph to be written, and then we can view the graph with tools such as x dot. Um, so yeah, we can see these here that uh, web number linked uh, the different nodes. So the green squares here are um, nodes, the red square are the output ports, and the purple squares are the input ports, and the blue squares are actually the links created by the web number. So um, this as a playback uh, node is actually the M player client uh, that has two channels. Uh, the left channel and the right channel and is connected to a converter and that converter is connected to the uh, default uh, ALSA node uh, which is my speakers on my laptop. Uh, we can actually view more information if we run it with um, the detail uh, option uh, and we can see more properties but it makes the graph much bigger. So yeah, we can see here, for example, um, that end player is this node with this ID, and we can see that the also device that it's using is uh, the uh, hardware zero. Uh, so yeah, we can now do more cool stuff. For example, we can use uh, the pulse audio volume control, uh, power control, uh, and we can see that. Uh, it's, it's monitoring uh, all the audio being played on, on my laptop uh, and we can also change the volume for example we can see also some warnings here because not all the uh, um, compatibility APIs are implemented yet but uh, yeah it's, it's working nicely um, and we can see then now here if we run the Piper tool um, that it's created white pump created more links. Now all the uh, output all the sorry input uh, nodes uh, they have a monitor port and basically the push the volume control uses those monitor ports and creates these nodes um, to actually monitor the audio coming out. So that's why we see this here. Um, so yeah, now we can do one more thing, which is uh, running Carla. Uh, Carla is a, an audio plugin host, and here in the patch bay section we can see uh, all the stuff all the audio stuff that is connected so M player is this also playback node and uh, we can see that two channels are connected we can um, disconnect the left channel for example and now only the right channel is playing on my speaker um, so if we run the tool again we can see that for example only the right channel is connected and for example if I uh, I can even connect the right channel the left channel to the right speaker and we, we can see here that in player both channels are connected to the uh, left um, sorry to the right channel of the audio convert yeah we, We can leave that as it is, and it's back to normal. So uh, yeah, that's all for this demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon. And that's all for this session. Um, please let me know if you have any questions on the chat. I'll be happy to reply, and uh, stay safe.
Bye. Okay, so uh, I have some questions. So one of the questions here is, uh, does Piper provide a way to create custom sources and things like Pulse Audio, something like a software microphone? Yes, it does. So uh, Piper has plugins and you can create your own sync and source uh, elements similar to the streamer. Uh, and uh, another question is uh, number 12. Uh, can you transport presentation times or other metadata through Piper pipelines? Uh, yes, so there is a metadata API uh, that are present in the buffer, so you can use that to, to, to achieve this kind of um, uh, logic. Any more questions? Uh, another question just came in, and uh, it's it's something like uh, the Pulse Audio Volume Control supported uh, in Piper. Yes, it's supported, and uh, uh, it's actually handled by the Piper Session Manager, not the Piper demo. So uh, you can use the Example Session Manager included in the uh, Piper project, or you can use a wipe number instead. Uh, another question that came in is, are there any challenges in using Piper with containers? Uh, so the answer is yes. So Piper supports containers. So it supports containers like uh, Flatpak or Wayland. Um, so basically, Piper asks permissions uh, to the container if it can access to, um, uh, to the video and audio devices. Uh, it doesn't rely on, on groups such as um, uh, the video and audio groups. Uh, another question is uh, maybe a little bit of topic. Are there any RTO decompression algorithms? And is it planned to include them in the implementation? Uh, no, there's no plans to do that in the uh, currently. Uh, any compression and codification is not planned to do in Piper. So this probably it's, for now it's this needs just uh, you need to use this stream for that. Uh, that's uh, another question came in. It's does latency improve using real time like Jack? Uh, well, the this, um, you can check the performance difference between Piper and Jack in the uh, wiki page. Uh, it's mostly the same for uh, audio buffers uh, above 8,000 samples. But uh, for example, if you want to really achieve low latency of, um, for example, 32 samples, which is one or two milliseconds, you can, uh, there's definitely a performance improvement against Jack. Uh, <clears throat> another question is, does Piper support open SLES? Uh, no, it doesn't support that.
Uh, I'm going to read an interesting question that was uh, already answered when doing the live session, and it's uh, how is this different or related to the streamer? To be more precise, is this expected to be used in parallel with the G streamer or meant to replace the streamer? Well, Piper, uh, it's just a multimedia uh, server that manages uh, multimedia devices. Uh, so it's not planned to replace the streamer because uh, it's a, it's a different uh, it has a different purpose. Um, so the streamer will still exist if you use Piper on your uh, desktop. So for example, and the streamer will mostly be used for encoding and decoding, and also for example, you wanna get video from. Um, there's no RTP stack in Piper, so for that you need to use the streamer. Uh, but for example, elements such as audio. Sorry, um, also sync, also source, or pull sync, pull source, or even video for Linux source. All these elements will eventually uh, be not used because you could use the Piper sync and Piper source distribution elements to basically uh, send and receive um, uh, video data or audio data um, to send and receive it uh, from from Piper. Uh, so it's going to simplify a lot uh, the multimedia stack. And some distributed elements will disappear, but the streamer will still be there and it will still be needed. Uh, another interesting question uh, is uh, how is the session manager talking to the pipe for daemon? Um, uh, so it's uh, it's used it uses basically um, Unix sockets. Uh, uh, so it's two, the two processes communicate using these two Unix sockets, and uh, they communicate uh, using a protocol. And um, this protocol is also a module in Piper, so users can implement their own native protocol if they want, or they can use, for example, uh, like for example, a Wayland protocol or anything like that. Um, so it's uh, very uh, flexible uh, in terms of com communication. Uh, another question is, uh, does Piper handle sample rate conversion like Pulse? Uh, yes, it does. It does. It handles uh, resampling and it handles audio mixing as well. Uh, and also format conversion, uh, for example, um, sign 60, 16 bits to uh, format, to float 32 um, samples. And it also handles uh, planar formats. It basically handles all the uh, raw uh, conversion for audio. Uh, regarding Bluetooth, another question is for Bluetooth call and music, is Piper talking to Bluetooth or, or it does it need something like Bluesy also for handling uh, the audio? Uh, no, it doesn't need any extra blue, uh, Bluetooth um, implementations uh, other than obviously the Bluetooth uh, library. <clears throat> uh, it, it basically implements, it has its own implementation of, of a Bluetooth device, uh, but it's not uh, really stable yet. Uh, for now, you can use uh, Bluetooth speakers because it uh, supports uh, A2DP profiles and HSP and H. Uh, SP profiles are uh, still um, in development and needs to be needs uh, they need more testing. Uh, 
Uh, okay, and that's it for all. This is the end of the conference. Thank you for watching, and um, I hope you enjoy.